triple duty today, that would be the finance committee of the uh, State House of Representatives, because they're looking at all of the things that cost money. And if you've been paying attention for the last several months, uh, as we uh, parse out what's happening in the ledge with Beth Fukumoto Chang, the minority leader, uh, you find out that that uh, when it gets down to this time, and we're, we're looking, you know, at the, you know, this, the end of the session uh, with insight, uh, now it, it's about money. And, and even though these bills might be a good idea, uh, can we afford them? Is that Beth? Good morning. First of all, Hi. good morning. Good morning. <laughs> is that uh, is that uh, a good way to put it? That you know, a lot of these bills make a lot of sense, but unless you have the money, no sense to pass them. Yeah. So we end up looking at a lot of bills that that in the end we're going to just decide that there's not enough money for. Good idea. Not enough money. Yeah. Some of those. Uh, let's talk about uh, one that we talked about a little bit last week, and this is the either the cost or the income related to perhaps. Uh, having these medical marijuana things. It looks mm-hmm. to me as though this is a lot closer to passing than it's been in the past. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you, What sort of a pushback or a feedback do you get or do you hear uh, from, from the others that, uh, that maybe a lot of people aren't that comfortable with this? You know, I actually, we've what we've heard, we I had a couple of people in my caucus vote no or WR on the on the medical marijuana dispensaries, and their communities got upset at them uh, mm-hmm. for voting no or WR because they felt like it was an obvious yes vote. So I think we've actually been surprised at how little pushback. I think we we all um, a number of us misjudged the yeah. public a little bit, thought that people were going to be really upset. It was going to mm-hmm. be a really difficult issue. Uh, and it's turning out to be, um, there's much more support than we expected. You know, I remember that you voted no with, with reservations. I mean, uh, you voted yes with reservations. Yes. Because you knew that we need to have them. And I think the example you used was specifically somebody in your district that right. you had firsthand experience about that needed this. Right, right. Uh, right. So everybody that voted yes probably had a similar thing okay yeah you know, or I they really be believe in it yeah, yeah. I, may not, I may not like it for me or for my family yeah. i don't want to build right next door to me but i think it's necessary everybody would agree with that i think yes we have to be compassionate and yes. understanding about people that need this right but there are many that are saying it's overkill yeah and 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 the original bill was the original bill uh had no phase in it just automatically ramped up to 26 dispensaries um and there were there were there were holes that mm-hmm. would allow marijuana to potentially get out and mm-hmm. and and f- subsequent in jobs other words, in other better. words be be um be abused by the people running the 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 stores and selling medical marijuana to people who don't need it uh, I think the whole well actually that's not been as much of a problem just because um because you have to have a medical marijuana card. Mm-hmm. To buy it at the store, the yeah. store would have a sort of like a hard yes or no when they could gotcha. sell it and when they couldn't. Okay, it's okay. easier to catch it there, but but from distributors, right? Because we would need people to grow, so there was there was space for there to be sort of leakage Back and door. growing, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, and then of course, it's still very easy to get your medical marijuana card in the state of Hawaii, mm-hmm. so that's also part of the problem. Yeah. In other words, fix. sometimes all you have to do is say to a doctor, you know. I hate to say this, but I have a, my back's killing me. Everything you're giving me doesn't work. Right. I think I want to try medical marijuana. And the doc says, sure. Right. Or depression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not feeling happy. Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, but that, that I'm, I'm not unhappy with that. Uh, I, I, only because I do know that until you've been in somebody's shoes, you have no idea what pain and suffering sure. is. So it's worth it. Sure. In your case, you had first hand experience, didn't you? Because somebody's daughter needed the oil, the, uh, the, right. the cannabis oil. And that's that's another step that's harder to take for people growing a, you know, a plant in their backyard and then making oil out of it. Right, especially because of the limit and the number of plants that we can have. So we're actually seeing other states, and I can't off the top of my head remember, it's a state that recently passed a resolution that said that they would never legalize marijuana in any form and whatsoever. It, right. Well, and now they're trying to figure out, is there a way for us to just legalize the oil? Because it's proving the oil is proving to be mm-hmm. the only thing that works for these little kids with this very specific seizure syndrome. Okay. Uh, you know what I, I want to do? I just want to change the subject for one minute because I know on, on Friday, this Friday, uh, we're due to talk with Rep uh, Thielen, Cynthia uh-huh. Thielen, about something she's been the champion of. Finally, 
there's going to be a formal uh, uh, a planting of, of seeds of uh-huh. hemp. Yep. The, and, and I guess now everybody in the ledge and everywhere else is able to differentiate between what that hemp is and what dope is. Yes, it is, it's yeah. been um, an pe- education process yeah. for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. out of curiosity, because I do know that you've been, you know, you're certainly not in favor of drugs in right. any way, shape, or form. Uh, did you need to be a little convinced at one point in time about whether or not that was a problem plant? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. And and Cynthia had to spend a lot of time explaining to us that the THC content, which is really the problem, right? The THC yeah. is the actual drug component right. of, of marijuana. She had to spend a lot of time explaining to us that the THC content would not, if you lit a whole field of hemp on fire, right. it's not going to get anybody high. Isn't that interesting? Because she once gave me the same analogy that you'd need several dump trucks full right. to get even <laughs> one joint out of. Right. You know, <laughs> so I mean, okay. It's, right. But, but that... Uh, it still took a long time to convince oh, yes. people. Um, there are some that are saying, I don't know if you agree with this, but Cynthia certainly is, and we're going to give her the chance on Friday to talk about it a bit. Uh, there's some that are saying that it can be a, an economic boon for us. And I mean, it really, because it'll grow like a weed here, excuse the expression. Yeah. You know, whoops. Grow like a weed. All right. Okay. So anyway, there, there's that one. So that's going to be on Friday. Um, there's a few other things. I do know that you've probably now seen that there is a move underfoot, uh, and the ledge is going to be dealing with. Uh, whether or not to purchase a privately owned building instead of maybe building a building for a lot more money. We we just plain need the space. Uh, how is that being explained to you? What do you think about this proposal? So my biggest concern, um, another building that the state purchased was the Kamamalu building, and that building is still basically sitting unused. 12 years later. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've not made any good use of it. It's true the state does need the office space. We're renting a lot now, mm. and and you know any homeowner understands it makes yeah. more sense to purchase than rent, but only if you're going to be able to keep up whatever you purchase. Mm-hmm. And the state has good been point. very bad at maintenance. Mm-hmm. So I would want to make sure that we're – not uh, restoring the Kamalu building has gone so slowly that I feel though as though we probably should be spending time working on that and then mm-hmm. dealing um, with buying more later. You know, when you do that, I mean, whenever you take a look at an older building, there would be certain things, I guess, that the owner of the building would have to disclose. I'm wondering if we're if any if we know that this this proposed purchase is a building that won't need. You know, outside an upgrade for maybe technology and everything, yeah. maybe it won't need that much. If it's the building that I think that it is, mm-hmm. um, Ali'i Place, I believe, then it should be okay. Um, but obviously, you never know for sure, right? Yeah. You need to see the disclosure. Yeah, yeah you got to go look. Yeah. Uh, it's it's good thing is the three main m- reasons are location, location, location. Yes. It's probably kind of where it needs to be. Uh, there was going to be, okay, now I want to shift to another thing. Um, I do know that everybody out in the in radio land last week sort of started scratching their heads and saying, how come we're just finding out about this now? There's a big move underfoot to relocate O Triple C. and it is kind of kind of sort of rail. Yes. And, and somebody is saying, well, if it's kind of kind of sort of rail, why doesn't the state tell the city, okay, you got to pay for the new prison? Right. So there there is there is a big move to do it now. What's happening with the with the rail right now is that there are multiple plots of land. Some are, belong to DHHL, some mm-hmm. belong to just the state straight out, some belong to the city. The state is trying to make money off of that land for itself. So the mm-hmm. money is not going towards the rail. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. that's okay. the issue, right? So in most in most city and counties, they make money off of development with the rail, right? TOD around rail stations. But this, the city, in our case, because so much of it is state-owned land, the state is trying to keep the revenues from sure. the development. Of course. So the so, city so, doesn't get so, any of it. So that would yeah. mean that because it's producing revenue now, mm-hmm. that, you, that the state would have to say to the city, well, show me. In, in other words, you pay for the revenue that we're not going to get anymore, mm-hmm. or you give us fair market value for this so we can make a decision. Right. So right now, it, even if OCCC gets moved, the state stands to profit much more than the city does. Mm -hmm. Whereas in other jurisdictions, the city would get some money. So that's the problem that we're having right now. Can can we assume, Beth, that that one of the promises or one of the uh, thoughts being sold to you guys Mm -hmm. to make your vote is that this can be accommodated in Halaba, that we can consolidate, you know, the services and the facilities, Mm -hmm. put everything together. To me, it, 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 it makes... Perfect sense, because from what I understand, not only is O Triple C in the way of the rail, but it's not big enough. Anyway, we we, right. we need to do something any, anyway. 
And and it seems as though it's probably a very easy place to escape from and to just sort of get lost. Walk right? across the street, yeah. Well, but there's another thing, and that is now we're looking at $9 million being spelt, spent in Halava to fix a security system, and we're going to have to spend send a whole bunch of inmates to the mainland while right. we do this work. Right. Somebody's got to explain that to us, right? Right, and I, I don't think the the explanation for moving O Triple C has been done all that well, right? Mm-hmm. Especially, I mean, even just the conversation about the rail and who's going to get the money and all of that is yeah. still very confusing to the public. Is this one of the things? that already finance is grappling with, or is it too early, that they don't need to worry about it yet because it's still in the planning stage. I think it might be too early for yeah. finance. I don't sit on it this year, though, yeah. so I'm not sure if they've discussed it maybe behind closed doors, but we haven't seen a bill yet. Okay, more coming up, including your opportunity. Remember, no email. Got a call. Mike Buck on AM690. The answer. It's like an adventure. It's like it's like the the doom of tomb. Actually, we ha- we actually have some really cool things to look forward to, and we'll talk about some of them. A lot of times, we've learned from Beth Fukumoto Chang in the past. A lot of these bills that are being worked on, that I guess are in finance right now, uh, they're really bills that have been around. We have laws that already deal with them, but there's been anomalies or there's been a, a need to come in and, and rewrite something. Haven't you introduced some bills that were already in law, but not very efficient? Some of the bills, just because of, I guess, attorneys and things, they just don't work as well as they could have when they were written. Yeah, I think um, we always come back and sort of relook. Um, when we were off the air, we were talking about the cell phone uh, mm, laws. Yeah. That, that's something we keep coming back to relook at. I know last year we had a problem of people were basically getting held up in court every mm-hmm. time they got a ticket. So we said, okay, well, we have to reevaluate the way we're doing this. So maybe we increase the fine, but we change the process by which people contest it so yeah, we don't yeah. have to have people lining up in the hallways at court. How many people? You know, we talked last time about the, the storm, the perfect storm of traffic that we've recently had. Oh, yeah. And I do know that, that they're, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. The cops were out enforcing cell things. Yes. And right, and these are constituents of Beth Fukumoto's, yes. right? They call them, hey, I got a thing for texting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and yet they, they look like they weren't going to drop it. Where's that uh, standing right now? Do you think that somebody's going to say, hey, come on? Let's let's do the right thing here. Yeah, I think they are. I mean, I uh, my office manager uh, well, lives, I bet. lives in Eva Beach. She lives yeah. in Eva Beach, so it's worse than Milani. Yeah. Um, she was in traffic with her children for seven and a half hours. My goodness. Um, and her her three month old and her two year old yeah. stuck in traffic. Um, and, oh and you know how <gasps> how are you, how are you going to pull up next to her and say you shouldn't be on the cell phone or right, whatever? Right, right, you right, know, right. I mean, they're not moving at all. They yeah. were stuck on Nimitz for four hours. You know. I do know that that it 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 is not prudent to think that that couldn't happen again. Yeah. Um, and and one of the takeaways, and I got a lot of pushback about this, and even though this is not about what's going on, I'm sure that some people reacted uh, to you and some others. Say, you know, I mean, wouldn't you expect that we'd have a backlog of parts? Why didn't the transportation folks understand? that these machines are old and they break and they need to keep an inventory. Number one and number two, they have to have people that know how to do the removal and replacement. Yeah, no, yeah. and and that's I think um, I watched the governor's press conference and it was very clear that they were getting a lot of questions yeah. about about the whole day and and rightfully so. I mean, like I said, my constituents uh, and those out in, mm-hmm. on the leeward coast were in traffic for a very long time. Um, but I think what people have to really think about is whether or not it's fiscally prudent for us to keep a backlog of all of these parts. Yeah. So in this case, the CPU is only only lasts for two years, So and it's very expensive. Right. So we could buy extras, but mm. the chances are that's money that will end up being wasted. It's unusual for both to just break. Yeah. Um, it was uh, however, storm. it, it yeah. was unusual to have a tsunami. And, and when you get one, it's the perfect storm, right? Correct, yeah. correct, yeah. Okay, I, I want to move something else because I had a lot of pushback on this and a lot of interested people that really didn't understand something. Mm -hmm. There is a bill that looks at removing a surgical requirement from steps one's got to take to change gender identification on a birth certificate. Uh, And that is is, going to be in committee today. Yes. Um, One concern was this. Any doctor or nurse in a delivery room, when that baby miraculously comes into the world, says, this is a boy or this is a girl. Nobody can change that. It's not, this isn't going to be something that's going to decide later what they're going to be. 
So what? where is this going, and what do you think some of the reasons why it is even still alive? What, what's driving this? Um, well, there are a bunch of different arguments, right? Uh, proponents of the bill would say that it's being pushed because of bullying, because when people go to TSA or whatever and they look like a woman, but they're... Yeah they're actually a man then they get they they get patted down or whatever once they go through security um and i think you know I, they have some legitimate complaints i think the people that are concerned about the bill also have very legitimate concerns mm-hmm. um including just the fact that when you are born you are designated with a sex right. and whether or not you choose to change that sex or change your gender or how you identify doesn't mean that you should change the historical document that says what you were at birth you know and that's where i come in i right. agree with that and and i had an and actually a listener that came up with something that i thought boy this is perfect uh, there is, I'm not sure what the statistics are, mm-hmm. but I do know that the percentage of people that really this effect, affects is minuscule in comparison to the whole. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody said that, look, here's the, here's the fix. You go back to your doctor or any doctor and be re-examined and have an addendum attached to that certificate. Mm-hmm. At age 23, Martha decided to become Marty. And that's it. So now he's Marty. Right. Uh, right. Isn't that a solution? And that does that doesn't take a, a whole, you know, a whole population of people that are not identified at birth. Mm-hmm. Or even um, there are multiple things we could do. Right. You could have a marker that says that the birth certificate has been amended. Mm-hmm. To exactly. The that's gender, what I'm getting. A marker. Or you that's can what have. I mean. Yeah. Or you yeah. can have a second. You know, w- when I got married. And change my name. Mm-hmm. I didn't change my birth certificate. I got a different certificate. Got, um, oh, okay. So that's okay. another that's another way we can look at that, mm-hmm. right? Um, I I think one of the things that is pushing it further along this time than it has in the past is that federal law has changed. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, your passport can get changed already yeah. to, to match this. So so one of the other things that this bill is looking like now is a compliance bill. It makes our, our laws a little bit more compliant with federal law because President Obama has changed yeah. the passport rules. You know, it is so interesting because there was a time uh, that uh, President Obama was pro-life mm-hmm. and when President Obama was this and that. And it seems like now some things are more politically correct if you follow Somebody who's is obviously a lame duck. Aren't there going to be a lot of changes after this after this shift anyway? <laughs> right. uh, where where does this bill sit? I mean, I, I'm not sure that it has that that finance is a big issue on it, but mm-hmm. it is a big issue for a lot of people. Where where is it going? Do you think? Uh, if there's a possibility that it's going to pass out of finance, in the mm-hmm. past it's not. It it hasn't passed in the end at the, yeah. at the very end of the session, so it's possible that it won't. It's very hard to say. There hasn't been as much pushback mm-hmm. um, as one would think. I think a lot because, like I said, it's now a federal issue too, um, and and President Obama I think is providing a lot of cover for this kind of stuff. It, interesting. Last night, my wife and I, who were semi addicted to The Good Wife, <laughs> uh, and they're very very timely. There was uh-huh. a thing about uh, uh, the whether or not a florist or a baker or whatever needs to um, you know. Right supply goods and services to a a, a gay uh, uh, wedding. We're looking at the same things here. I mean, we are looking at some of these things here in Hawaii. Does it sometimes feel that there are some of us that think this this correctness stuff is a bit overboard? I mean, you know, uh, all of a sudden you take somebody who uh, religiously doesn't want to do something, make them do it, and now they're the ones that are being uh, discriminated because of their religion. Right. I think one of the things that, the state hasn't figured out is how to make sure that everybody's rights are protected sure. versus raising one group's rights over another's. And I know yeah. there are a lot of people in the religious community right now who feel as though their rights are being given a sort of second class uh, standing with the legislature and, and with the federal government in general. I think when you look across the country at some of the things that are going on, um, the religious community is rightfully concerned. Yeah. That you, you know, one thing, I don't know if you would agree with me on this, but I can tell you, that uh, in the last couple of decades, there has been a resurgence of religion. I mean, for instance, just to, just to give you an example, of the huge numbers of new Christian churches in Hawaii that have uh, taken uh, schools and beaches and all kinds of places to do their business. It's not, a, you know, typical bricks and mortar. This is literally hundreds of thousands of people in Hawaii that are now refining a reason to have some sort of religion. And these are the ones that are upset, and they're voters. Unfortunately, there aren't enough voters. I, yeah. I mean, that would be that would That's be my point, yeah. you know I if if and this is from the perspective of the legislature, 
And if you look at same sex marriage and, and people came out in droves, right, to say sure. we're not going to reelect you in November. And every single person that voted for same sex marriage got reelect, reelected, yeah. every single person, including the governor. Mm-hmm. And that. You know, when when we look at measures like this and say, why are they being passed? It's because people aren't voting. Yeah. If there is a resurgence of religion, people are either not voting in favor of people that maybe are more in favor of their their religion. Um, so they're voting differently. And there are a lot of people who in the religious community that voted for Neil Abercrombie. Yeah. And interestingly enough, would you agree with this? That we seem to have as uh, collectively as a state amnesia on voting day that we don't remember stuff that happened a year or two ago when when we were so angry at somebody and then they get reelected well and that's the, i think that's the question that i have for and i and i have had for a lot of people in the religious community is that is does it really matter as much for you or for the people that sit in church with you as yeah. you think that it matters because yeah, there are a good. lot of people that think that it's really a big deal and we're definitely going to change the electorate next yeah. time and the people sitting next to you in church are not agreeing with you yeah. <laughs> they're voting for neil abercrombie yeah. they're voting for well you know this, that's interesting you say that because it's often been said somebody's religious beliefs don't necessarily parallel their uh, their political beliefs. As a matter of fact, right. it's safe to assume that of all these new churches, those people say, well, those are all a bunch of right-wing Republicans. It's not true. Right, and they'll, I mean, at the end of the day, people pick the economy, they pick their jobs, yep. they pick cost yep. of living. And in Hawaii, and, and we'll bring it to Republicans and Democrats, um, which is oversimplifying it, but let's just say it does, People, people in Hawaii are still saying Democrats are going to protect my job, mm-hmm. not Republicans. And that yeah. is how they vote. It doesn't matter what else is going on. That is what they're voting when for. When it comes time, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's two things. That that plucks at your heartstrings or that that plucks dollars out of your wallet. Right. It's going to be one of the two. Beth Ann, right. Fukumoto uh, Chang in the house. And the number is 296-KHNR if you'd like to join us. Uh, we got more coming up after a check with traffic. And don't forget, this is first Monday of the month, which also means it's Crime Stopper Monday. Kim Buffett is in the house, and we're going we're gonna to see if we can find some bad guys. Talk about crime stoppers. That's all coming up right now. Here's Malin Moore. Okay, you know, uh, Beth Fukumoto, Chang, and I, we talk about more stuff off the air than we do on. And one of the things that just came up uh, that we were talking about uh, and that we need to take a look a little bit about is that uh, I noticed uh, after... Uh, talking with somebody that made a very long trip to the emergency room. Lots of things go on in that ER uh, that you hear about or you read about until you go there and actually see it. it it's, it's really mind-blowing. And it also lends the fact, that, and Beth, I remember uh, in years past with Gene Ward, who used to do this, uh, uh, baton passing before you got it, and even before that, that there's always been these two words in the back of everybody's mind in Hawaii that nothing seems to be happening. And I, f- I failed to ask you anything uh, earlier in the session, if there's anything at all on the table anywhere that addresses uh, the the possibility of tort reform in Hawaii, no, yeah, um, there isn't, and I think um, it's it's hard. It's something that's difficult to get through. I think it's not gotten. I can't remember the last time we had any meaningful tort reform. The, the, the reason why I bring up the, everybody knows that on some of the neighbor islands, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to get goods and services. Yes, uh, right now we have state hospitals and others that are in the throes of yes. financial difficulty. And a lot of people are saying because the first call somebody makes is to the ambulance and the second call is to the attorney. Right. That, that we seem to have so many uh, frivolous lawsuits. Is there uh, a way even maybe the courts can look at this without having tort reform, just getting rid of the nonsense ones in the very beginning? Yeah, you know, I don't. I think I think the legislature would have to adjust the law before mm-hmm. the courts could just act on anything. Uh, one of the One of the things that has been frustrating this session, there have been moves to do things like um, allow psychologists to mm-hmm. administer uh, prescription medicines, sure. um, which was frustrating for physicians and for psychiatrists because they feel like they, a psychologist is not going to go through the same amount of training as they are sure. in medical school. But because the neighbor islands are having so many issues with health care, the legislature is just trying to look at everything to try to widen the amount of people that can deliver services. Would this be going back to what you were saying earlier when – when sometimes people that are worried about this medical marijuana mm-hmm. enactment would say, well, wait a minute, what happens if somebody that's not even surgically trained is administering marijuana because it makes my 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 uh, patient feel good? Right, yeah, No. And, and with marijuana, you would wanna make sure that the right person is administering yeah. it, right? Same thing, and, and it's a similar, a very similar concern, but 
the legislature has sought to just widen uh, who is allowed to deliver yeah, I, things. I was going to say, not, maybe even not deli- not just allowed to deliver things, but what about just saying there is a, there is a set of criteria yeah. that this board is going to use, even though the physician or the, the, the provider is recommending this. It is not an automatic card. We're gonna. We, it has to meet these criteria. Yeah, it, even a set of criteria would be good. Um, it, so far, we just I, the the move with marijuana is to treat it more like a medication. Mm-hmm. So, trying to get rid of something like having a board to look at it, having the Department of Health, having the Department of Public Safety keep a record has all been somewhat difficult because we don't do that with other medications i would argue that for some pain medication and for some um like things like ritalin adhd medications the things that are really um we're having trouble with regulating i i would say that maybe we actually need to tighten regulations on some of our medications too like we would marijuana um, it's d- more difficult to get Sudafed sometimes. Than I, other I, I'm things. sure you feel the same way I do. I mean, my wife and I laugh at most of the TV ads at night uh, that have to deal with medical medicine. They tell you for 10 or 20 seconds, this is good for you. Right. And then all the things that it's going to do, <laughs> unpleasant dreams, suicidal thoughts, right. death, rashes, <laughs> you know. And so this is all, isn't that all an example of what we're talking about? These medications are trying to make sure that they cover themselves yes. for for yes. for lawsuits. Yes, yeah. very much. And it makes it hard. I know Representative Ward has suggested in the past being able to use things that haven't gone through um, a full trial mm-hmm. as uh, using experimental medications and procedures uh, and allowing that in our state if somebody's case is terminal. Right. So if somebody has no other option, then we should allow them to go ahead with experimental drugs. I think that that is why a lot of times uh, people would agree, even if it goes against their grain, mm-hmm. because they consider marijuana an entry drug and all of this, right. they are p- perfectly willing to make the exception for somebody that doesn't have an alternative. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I want to spend a couple minutes here because I think this is a big one for me. There is a proposal that's going before the Finance Committee on Tuesday, uh, and this is to do with these PACs and super PACs. Mm -hmm. Could you explain to people that don't know what these things are? For instance, if there was a PAC that was interested in in Beth Fukumoto, Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, you would probably enjoy the fact that somebody was interested in you, but we're not permitted to deal with them. Is that correct? That is correct. So um, I had a case in my first election. There was an organization that that was a super PAC that um, was spending money in my race and that I didn't know about. <laughs> I didn't find out till after the election. But they were all negative mail pieces for mm-hmm. the most part. So I would find out. Against was, your opponent. Against my opponent. Okay. Um, but things that I never would have said and things mm-hmm. that I would argue were not always factually accurate. So when I would go to people's doors, I was, suddenly I just saw this turn in, in my door-to-door contacts. Oh. Suddenly there would be certain people that would just be so angry with me. <laughs> And I just didn't understand. What did I do? Um, I had run a not super positive campaign, but not as negative as I was being treated. Um, But that that's what happens when you're dealing with a pack. They're Mm. not allowed to tell the candidate and the candidate's not allowed to tell them. So I can even tell them to stop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once again, I want to go back to our my wife and my addiction to the good wife, yeah. because that came up in this mock elections that they've just gone through to make her the, the, the state's attorney. And, And that is that they come back after the fact. And I, I guess all lawmakers experience this when your staff member will say, hey, Beth, there's somebody out here that said that they contributed, you know, 50 grand to your campaign through their PAC, <laughs> and now they want a bridge uh, being built. Yes. Isn't, that the, isn't that what all of us voters are worried about? What do these guys want in return? Oh, absolutely. And the PACs, um, they do come back, and they do. Uh, I had one of the packs calling my husband Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, once a week to remind him uh, I got Beth elected, which again, like I said, Ah, I I just explained what the response was. So Mm -hmm. arguably that is not true, but um, well, you know, in our neighborhood, uh, you know, you know, we're not, you and I are not in the same neighborhood. I got, you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of pieces of mail uh, from both. I mean, from PACs for both parties, you right. know, for the in the lieutenant governor and gubernatorial race. It's a matter. And, and that's another thing. What, the, the last thing you can explain. How often do, do constituents come to you or to others and say, look, we just need an explanation as why does it cost X number of dollars to get elected into a job that pays 10 percent of that as a salary? <laughs> 
Yeah, I you know, I actually have not had that asked that often. People get frustrated with the amount of mail yeah. uh, that they get. They get frustrated with And money that gets spent on it, I would imagine. And the money, yeah, yeah uh, the the negative mailing really upsets people, mm-hmm. I think, um especially especially in the mail, but even on TV. It, there got up yeah. to a point during the election where you couldn't watch television without seeing, you know, five bad pictures of Colleen Hanabusa yeah, or whatever. Yeah, uh, whatever. And, and the same thing holds true to the robocalls. I mean, I know people, they get so frustrated that they've either changed their phone number or gone non-pub. And even when you go oh, yeah. non-pub, you still get them. People still find you. Yeah. 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 Uh, robo-dialed. Yep. Anyway, uh, if, if you had, uh, first of all, like you said earlier, it's mostly the finance committee that's really busy this week. Mm-hmm. But uh, once again, what maybe a uh, last question today, what is a piece that, of legislature that you are looking for, hoping that it gets uh, looked at favorably and goes through? Um, at this <laughs> at this point, um, there aren't a lot that I'm really watching. One of the things I know is a big deal is going to be the Turtle Bay, whether or not mm-hmm. we pay for an easement at Turtle Bay. We had rushed something through the last minute last yeah. session, um, and, and we didn't fund it fully. So whether or not that money goes through is something I know a lot of people are going to be watching in the district next to mine. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And, you know, when we get next week, we're going to talk about something else, and that is the number of people that don't want Colina to give that thing to the city and, yes. to, and the states involved in that one, too. Yeah. Hey, Beth, thanks. Yep. Good luck. Have a good week. We'll Thank see you next you. time. All right. Uh, when we